Bringing technology into the classroom is almost useless if the resources you introduce are not effective in supporting the learning objectives you have in mind, or if you have not planned for the necessary equipment. To ensure that your resources are effective and appropriate, you need to plan your lessons carefully. There are many questions you can ask yourself when planning lessons that include technology. For instance, what learning styles or intelligence types are represented in your class? What technology skills do your students already have? It's a good idea to consider these two questions from the first day, as they help you determine at the outset what technology you might use in the class. From there, you can consider questions more specific to the lesson you have in mind. First, what are you trying to teach? Or what are your learning objectives? What materials and technology will you use? Having clear objectives helps you answer this question. And, why incorporate technology into your lesson? One reason might be to build creativity, communication, or critical thinking skills. You also need to determine if you have the necessary equipment to use the technology. If not, can it be reserved from the school library? As well, do you have the right software, and do you need to be trained in that software? And how should you prepare the classroom to accommodate everything? How you answer the last question largely depends on what resources you have, such as the number of computers in your class. Furthermore, can you modify existing materials to incorporate the technology you want to use and still teach your objectives? And what method of instruction will you use? For instance, will you use a computer and projector to conduct demos? Or will you show instructional videos? Will you engage students in educational games, tutorials, or web research? The answers depend on your resources as well as your objectives. There are also other questions to consider. Will you require group or individual work, and is the technology conducive to this? Do your students have the computer skills necessary for using the technology, or do they need software training? If they need training, how long will you allot for this? And how long should you give students to work with the technology? Finally, what problems might they encounter? It's important to give students plenty of time to work with the technology in your plans so that they can practice what they've learned, as well as meet any grade-level technology standards that your school, state, or district may require. We've listed some tips that may help you accomplish this. Here are some additional tips that may help students fulfill technology standards. Keep in mind that although you should allow students enough time with technology, you'll also need to make sure not to give them too much time. It's important to set time limits, as students can become so engrossed in activities such as educational games or web research that they neglect other activities you've planned. We've looked at many questions you might consider as you plan lessons that incorporate technology. Depending on your lesson objectives and other factors, you may not need to answer all of these questions, or you may ask other questions. Before we look at examples of how these questions can help you plan specific lessons, try to come up with your own. When you're finished, click Next to continue. Let's look at a sample lesson plan that includes technology. As we do, consider the questions that need to be addressed during planning. If your objective is to show the importance of proper nutrition and exercise, you could first show a brief video about health and wellness. If your classroom isn't equipped with a large screen television, you may need to reserve one from the library. And you need to be sure to plan for that. Then, you might direct students to an online health journal, where they enter their meals and exercise from the previous day. The journal should be pretty self-explanatory, so it shouldn't be hard for your students to use. Therefore, it doesn't require any additional training for you or your students, 
although you'll want to go over the tool yourself beforehand. If you don't have enough computers for each student to work on their own computer simultaneously, you'll have to decide whether it would be better to use a computer lab or to have students take turns on classroom computers. If you go the latter route, it's important that you specify the amount of time they're allowed online. And regardless of your choice, students should work individually, logging in their own information. So why incorporate this technology into the lesson plan? Because it helps teach the objectives and makes it more interesting than taking notes on a lecture or reading from a textbook. The video reinforces the concepts being taught and the online activity creates an authentic learning experience as the journal can calculate the nutritional values of the foods students input as well as the amount of calories burned through exercise. Also, by displaying the students' results in graphs or charts and comparing those results to daily recommendations, the journal provides visual proof of the importance of nutrition and exercise. Now that we've answered what the purpose of the technology in this scenario is, let's see what other questions were addressed. Try this exercise, and when you're ready to look at another example, click Next. Why don't we examine another scenario in which technology is included in a lesson plan? Let's say you want students to learn about the poetry styles Shakespeare used. You could have students go to websites you've bookmarked that showcase Shakespeare's poetry and have them choose a favorite poem. Using web research or educational CDs about poetry, the students determine what style of poetry their chosen poem exemplifies, such as a sonnet. For homework, they create a poem in that style and bring it in the next day. During class, they enter it in a word processing application and print it out. For this lesson plan, teacher guidance is needed more than instruction as students will pretty much conduct their research and create their poems on their own. Training is unnecessary as well, as most students will probably already have some experience with the web and with word processors. If not, you or their peers can help them as they go along. As in the previous example, if there are not enough computers for the students to use, you can consider taking them to a computer lab or you can divide them up and specify the time allowed to research and to write. You can create separate centers with the computers you have available, making one for typing their poems and the rest for research. As we've seen, incorporating technology into your lesson plans is not difficult. It's likely that many of the things you need to consider are similar to the types of considerations you have to make with lesson plans that don't include technology. Try to come up with a list of questions you should ask, as that list can help you with each new plan. Here are the questions we've suggested in this lesson. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.